welcome to my hometown of Jamestown, North Carolina. As usual on my channel, we'll be talking to ghosts, but probably not in the way that you'd expect. Here we focus on grounded, non-sensational psychic mediumship reads, then see how well those reads match up with the history we can find. You'll be invited to make your own reads throughout. Get ready to drop some comments, and we'll all see if we can work to validate each other throughout. I am excited to share with you Jamestown, North Carolina. Similarly to how you let me explore Regalsville, where you grew up, we are now here where I grew up so you can make psychic reads. That's me. <laughs> Just sharing each other's, uh, sharing each other's childhood. Yeah. Before Catherine makes their reads, it's your turn to chime in. Comment anything that you get on this building. Take a good grounding breath and check in with your intuition. We all have intuition. Do you see any pictures in your mind's eye? How about hearing the sounds of memories in your mind? Any emotions or physical feelings? Trust yourself. You may be surprised at what you get. I don't like it. I got the sense there was a very strong male presence in that building. He's standing on the, on the window in the middle on the topmost floor. He looked like he wanted to start a fight. I wouldn't describe it as, oh my goodness, it's so bad. Obviously it's demons. No, it's just a really angry dude. Like I can't really pinpoint a reason for it though. I got the, the word fights came to mind like I don't know if it's this guy or something like that I got this some people don't like the way I do things he looks like he has facial hair and the funny thing is it's like I don't even know if he like worked there but he's just there I see him like in a linen shirt. I think he had a vest on at some point, like a vest with simple buttons on it, britches. He looks put together, but not right this second. A quick note on the sound. Thanks to my Patreons, I've been able to find little bitty mics that I can use for filming. However, this was filmed before that time and on one of Jamestown's busiest streets. I hope you'll forgive the noise. I promise my video quality just gets better and better with every video that I make. Speaking of that, did you know that this video took six hours to make between editing, filming, planning, didn't even include travel to get there, researching, and more, and then I post a new video every single week? Honestly, I would not be able to do that without my Patreon support. Patreons help me fund this content so I can make learning available to everyone. Everyone deserves to learn and grow and trust their intuition. If you're looking to take the next step in your growth, check out the link in my description. Patreons, as you're watching, thank you. Thank you so much for supporting me. I'm trying to kindly like be like, hey, like just let me know what's going on. And like, just kind of like pulling a little bit here and there. And he's getting more agitated because I'm like all up in his grill right now. I can feel that. Um, I did see something with, I did see the image of a gun, like an old gun, like a flint gun, which like, think of like a pirate gun, like at a certain time period, they had to use like gunpowder and then load it. And then you had to like kind of gun. And then something about fights, something about starting a fight. I just don't like, he's, be, he's not being very giving. He's very, Ah, leave me alone. <laughs> so I think I'll stop bothering him because I can see him like in that window, like with my eyes. I wanted to see what he wanted to say because he's so present in that space, but he's being very particular about it. So that's what I've got for that. The building itself, there's something off about the building itself, but I can't. Oh, something happened. I don't know what though. Something happened. I do get the sense of like a store in there at one point. There was like a desk and they had goods. Um, I see sacks in there, like sacks of stuff. Some boxes with like fruit in them. And some wares, some goods, not a ton. It's like a little merchant store. Oh, I don't know who that was. He's like a heavier set man. Um, not like, and I'm, I'm when I say heavy set, I mean like he had just like a little bit of weight in his belly. He was just like, well, you had to have a couple things people needed on the way. Okay, that's fair. Cool, cool. Where are you? 
I'm around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's got his hair. Um, it's like thinner on the top and not bald. And it kind of sticks up a little bit. But he like tries to push it back. And it looks white to me. I almost said Benjamin Franklin-esque. <laughs> like he kind of looks like, like, like a, like a more, uh, like a more hair Benjamin Franklin, kind of. And he has, he does have some kind of like glasses, but he has them on his head. And I see him looking at something like this, like he totally forgot these were even right there. And then he goes, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I see papers, like lines of like X to X, cost X, logs of, pa of books under the desk. Very warm. And then the top floor, storage. Storage for goods, things. And then that guy is just up there. He seems very out of place now that I'm like going deeper than the, than his presence. I think curmudgeon -y man might have stayed there for a minute, but I can't be sure. Then I would just be surmising. Okay. Yep. All right. Let's see how Catherine's psychic reads match up. This building is known as the Old Storehouse. It was built in 1824 by Richard Mendenhall, aka the same Richard Mendenhall that lived across the street, and whose house, and maybe even whose ghost, we checked in on in a past episode. The general consensus is that the building was used for Mendenhall's tanning business, and his tan yard was just behind his residence. The building would have also had household items and dry goods on sale. This building was later rented out as a residence, and small shops also rented it from time to time. One known renter was Nathan Gardner & Co. But it is unknown exactly what he did for business in the mid to late 1800s. Moving forward in time, this structure was noted as a house as late as 1928, before the area became part of City Lake Park. I wanted to offer some logistics on some of Catherine's readings. While a lot of them hit the marks on what the building was used for, as well as the records I found supporting men primarily spending time in this building, the question remains, who was who? Which man was which? I can't say that Quakers do traditionally keep beards, which would line up with the angrier spirit. Was that Richard Mendenhall? I'd need a historical note to his personality to know that for sure. Unfortunately, there aren't many records that are still remaining from 1800 small town store owners. I just showed the historical plaque. How right were you? Pretty, pretty darn right. <laughs> um, it was a store. Uh, I, I mentioned that there, I saw like a bed in there um, that it, it was a private residence at one point. They did sell goods and foods and things like that. So that's cool. I, I definitely feel really like, I feel like a good psychic today. I feel like doing I'm the psychic it. things? I'm doing the psychic things and I'm on it. And uh, yeah, reading it, I was just, I got very excited because I was just like, oh man, I like hit all the points of that building. And then it talks a little about like the construction of the building itself and like why it was particularly interesting. And I was just like, yeah, it's a cool building. <laughs> so yay, I'm proud of myself. I did very well. I literally just moved you backwards. You right. did not look at what was behind you. I want you to touch the ground and see what's literally right behind you. You want me to touch the ground? Touch the ground. Wait, I'm touching the ground to feel what's behind me? What's behind you, yeah. Touch the ground to feel what's behind me. 